方ねそんときゃこれでいくか Did you know that Will Smith shows up in Gintama? This isn't a question meant to pique your interest in this anime based on Hideaki Sorachi's manga. Far from it, actually, because even if you're not a fan of the series, you probably know by now that nothing about Gintama, no matter how outrageous, should phase you. And you probably also know that one of his specialties is parodies. Nobody does a parody the way Gintama does. No person, place, event, Film, TV show, anime, cultural icon even can escape its insatiable appetite for satire, caricature, and mockery. Not even one of Hollywood's biggest stars. And while they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I'm pretty sure Gintama's doing it just for the laughs. Nothing wrong with that though, hey? By now you probably know what today's video is all about, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Here are the top 10 parodies in Gintama. Now, our first candidate is hardly a surprise. It's Dragon Ball Z and it makes an appearance in an episode with Hijikata as the main character. The story revolves around the chain smoking Shinsengumi vice captain making a trip to space to smoke a cigarette in peace after all of Edo enforces a strict ban on smoking. The plot, however, seems to be merely an excuse for a truckload of DBZ references. Hijikata's first stop is planet Hamek, which sounds suspiciously like Namek. What follows is a revolving door of characters who bear a striking likeness to some of DBZ's most celebrated figures, including Goku, Frieza, Cell, and Krillin. At one point, cigarettes take a back seat as Hijikata goes in search of the Zuru Zuru Balls, which point to the wish granting Dragon Balls of the original series. Now, the innuendos get even more detailed with shout outs to the scouter device worn by Frieza's army and the magical dragon Shenron. Some lines of dialogue from DBZ become parody fodder too. What makes this episode even more hilarious is that all these borrowed characters are voiced by Gintama's regulars, who seem to be having a bit of fun at poor Hijikata's expense. Next, we have a Kuroko no Basket spoof that's sure to have you rolling around on the floor laughing. Horror meets Kick the Can meets Assassination Plot in this flashback episode about Gintoki, Katsura, Sakamoto, and Takasugi's shared past. Invited to a reunion party by an anonymous person, Gintoki, Katsura, and Sakamoto find themselves haunted by an entire squad of unfriendly ghosts in jerseys and shorts. The parody includes Kuroko's trademark move, the Direction, a technique that allows him to become invisible and divert his opponent's attention, thanks largely to his weak presence on the court. In Gintama, this technique is used to play kick the can. Incidentally, Kuroko and Kurokono share the same Japanese voice actor. If all that basketball tomfoolery doesn't have you in splits, a scared, witless Gintoki murdering the Doraemon theme song is sure to do the trick. Talk about a parody within a parody. Ichigo's training in Zangetsu's inner world is anime legend and hence ripe for the picking. The parody begins with Gintoki, Kagura, and Shinbachi waking up in a pitch black world where they meet Zangetsu clone Toyako. You can't miss his sunglass and cape resemblance to Zangetsu. Toyako offers, cajoles, threatens, and even begs to teach the disinterested trio his ultimate technique, which only earns him a painful kick in the thighs. This sequence is peppered with bleach references. Unlike the authoritative Zangetsu, Toyako is a pitiful figure. A shut in with a kinky reading habit, no friends, and an overbearing mama. The spoof ends with the odd jobs gang beating him and his dad up and mastering the ultimate move, the thigh burst, in the process. Bleach might have fallen off the radar of fans, but not of Gintama's producers, it seems. It makes another appearance later on, this time with Gintoki having mastered Ichigo's final Getsuga Tensho form. <laughs> The next target is Saint Seiya, the hit shonen series from the 1980s. The spoof comes smack in the middle of what appears to be a regular Gintama episode. This one centered around scary stories and ways to rook kids out of their money. Kagura comes up with a couple of stories that all turn out to be parodies of Saint Seiya. One features a pair of brothers who turn out to be the siblings Phoenix Ikki and Andromeda Shun. The bronze Saint Phoenix has the honor of being overly exploited in this episode, which makes that scene of Gintoki getting worked up over potential copyright. 
copyright trouble and another one where he actually gets a call from the copyright agency, a nice touch. But it's the final moments when the parody becomes pure gold. As the credits roll, Gintama's cast gets an old school Saint Seiya makeover. Gintoki trades his dead fish eyes for Seiya sparkly brown peepers, while all three odd jobbers channel their inner phoenix with their gravity defying blue bangs. There is really no end to the creative ways in which Gintama lampoons other shows. This ending perfectly encapsulates that creativity. Next, we have a parody of Legendary Boxing Series. In the ring, we have Shin Bachi in one corner and Hijikata, or rather his alter ego Toshi, in the other. The die-hard otakus are in the battle of a lifetime, fighting for the right to become the leader of the official Otsuchan fan club. High stakes indeed there, as you can see. As the rivals throw everything they've got at each other, the four similarities to Ashita no Jo and Hajime no Ippo are hard to miss. From the players' fighting stance and muscle flexing to the flying punches, Steely glances and bloody noses, Gintama goes all out to emulate the two beloved boxing series. The black eye patches worn by Gintoki and Kagura are an obvious shout out to Joe's mentor Danpei from the 1970s series. The floating smoke on the other hand mimics the animation of Ippo's fight sequences. If it weren't for the silliness of the premise, one might even call this episode a tribute rather than a caricature. Hopefully it inspired some viewers to check out the original targets which are definitely definitely worth a watch. The next anime to get the Gintama treatment is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This isn't just one episode we're talking about, but an entire arc that's a good four episodes long. Gintoki and the gang find themselves at a mountain ryokan or inn for a hot spring break. Unfortunately for the cowardly Gintoki, the inn is haunted, not by ghosts, but by stands, and he's being roped in by the innkeeper Oiwa to serve these special guests. Oiwa incidentally has a stand. You might have guessed by now that the ghostly stands here are no different than the stands that serve as physical manifestations of power in Jojo's universe. A very obvious reference is a clone of Jotaro Kujo's stand star Platinum. Oiwa's rush attack is also typical of Jojo's action sequences. <laughs> The Ghost Ryokan arc is one of the funniest in the series, with elements from Japanese history and parodies of other shows as well. But the JoJo digs are the ones that really um, <clears throat> stand out. <laughs> On to number four now, and it's a double parody once again, this time of Ruroni Kenshin and Fist of the North Star. Soul switches are one of the most common tropes in anime, and Gintama's no different. In episode 287, Gintoki and Hijikata survive a road accident but have their soul switched. The result is mayhem, with an authoritarian taking charge of the Yorozuya and a slacker in command of the Shinsengumi. In the chaos that ensues, Shinbachi appears in a blue haori and slick back hair. His look and peculiar sword stance are a play on Hajime Saito, a character in Ruroni Genshin who happens to be the captain of the Shinsengumi. The blue Haori too is inspired by the Shinsengumi's uniform in the old series. Meanwhile, the Shinsengumi's new look in the parody borrows heavily from Fist of the North Star, from their biker gang concept to their purple mohawks. Incidentally, this isn't the martial arts anime's first brush with Gintama's parody machine. Go back 100 episodes and you'll see a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Fist of the North Star's opening. An early episode with a storyline about new ideas to keep the Gintama anime from being cancelled, which is a constant worry throughout the series, leads to an avalanche of parodies. Nothing is sacrosanct anymore, it seems. But it's Otai's idea that merged three shonen classics that's probably the most familiar, the most memorable, and hence the funniest of the lot. In the new Gintama film of her imagination, which she cleverly titles Dragon Bleepies, the Edo gang parody various characters from Dragon Ball, Bleach, and One Piece. So you'll see Shin Sengu Chief Kondo as One Piece villain Crocodile, Kondo again as a Soul Reaper of Bleach, and Kondo a third time as Dragon Ball antagonist Cell. And each time he gets the stuffing beaten out of him by Otai. Gintama has made a career of taking the piss out of these three series, that's for sure. <laughs> Bring out your lightsabers because it's time for number two. Unlike the earlier entries on this list, Gintama's parody of pop culture giant Star Wars comes couched within a serious story arc. Well, serious by Gintama standards, of course. An old friend makes a comeback in Shinbachi and Otai's lives. Obi Hajime, named after the Jedi Master himself and sharing his fondness for dull brown cloaks, returns from a distant planet as a master of the beam sword style. 
style. Now the siblings pick him to succeed their father as the head of their family dojo. Naturally, it's the cue for plenty of jousting and swordplay using lightsabers. By the way, this isn't the first Star Wars parody in Gintama actually. 30 odd episodes before Obi Hajime's introduction, the Odd Jobs gang fights off an army of alien invaders led by the evil Dark Vader, who's a parody of both Darth Vader from Star Wars and Jar Aznable from the Gundam franchise, apart from being an Elizabeth lookalike. That arc even recreates the familiar opening crawl of the Star Wars movie. May the fast be with you forever, Gintama. Samurai no Kuni. And now it's finally time to unveil our top pick. It comes in the opening moments of the first episode of season 6 which aired way back in 2017. Rather than the standard recap of the story so far, the introduction has enough parodies to last you a lifetime and features all the big guns of the shonen genre. Sample this, okay? Gintoki eats the wave wave fruit to get a permanent perm and sets off on a voyage to find the Pirate King's treasure, One Piece, check. He meets a young girl in search of magical balls that will summon a dragon and together they defeat a green-skinned villain, Dragon Ball. Check. With their companion, a pair of glasses, they enter the world tune-in hunter hero exam, Naruto. Check. Hunter Hunter. Check. In typical irreverent style, Gintama makes a mash of the series it parodies. In between, there are some not-so-obvious shout-outs to other anime, including Kimono Friends and probably Pokemon. It's no wonder the introduction ends with Shinpachi in a panic about ripping off one too many shows. Well, that's what we love about Gintama, isn't it? That it never shies away from doing the outrageous and the obnoxious. If you haven't checked out the anime already, I strongly recommend you do. Before that, you can also check out my video, Why You Should Watch Gintama, on my second channel, Vinitube Kai. On that note, that's a wrap from me. Gintama is parody gold, as you know, and sadly, there are way too many that I've had to leave out today. Would you like me to make a volume two or maybe more Gintama videos in general, like the good old days? Now, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll definitely consider it, so leave a like and let me know. Also, drop me a comment and tell me what your favourite parodies in Gintama are. I'd love to hear from you. Also, hit the like button if you would and subscribe to Vinitube for more anime content. Stay safe and see you soon.